This is One on One. Kyan Krippendorf is the author of Outthink the Competition, How a New Generation of Strategists Sees Options Others Ignore. Good to see you, Kyan. Thanks. Good to be here. Let's get to it uh, right away. You have uh, done some consulting for some pretty big companies mm -hmm. like Microsoft, Citigroup, and uh, Red Bull. Uh, outthink the competition. Mm -hmm. Let's get right to some of the specific strategies we talk about. Uh, five habits of being an outthinker, outthinking the competition. One of the ones that I really drew, drew me right away is mental travel, mental time travel. I didn't grab this. I didn't yes. understand it right away. What does it it's mean? A, it's a habit that humans develop around the age of three. And what it simply means is that you travel forward in time and imagine a future. You know, innovative thinkers are willing to travel forward. Uh, the founder of Stanford University said, man cannot create what he cannot imagine. It's that, mm -hmm. it's that concept. It's like a chess player thinking 10 moves out. And, uh, and if you see great innovators, great politicians as well, you see that throughout the day they, mm -hmm. they, they stop and they imagine out and then they come back and they make their choice. But you call these people out thinkers. Yes. Before I should have uh, actually gone back and give you a, given you an opportunity to describe what an out thinker is before yes. we talk about the strategies. What is an out thinker? Well, I mean, my theory is that that innovators they see options that others don't see because they think outside of prevailing paradigms. That humans we want to stop thinking. We want to start repeating ourselves. You know, you've got a, you got a concept for uh, let's say a concept for a TV show and uh. it works, right? And and how many TV shows just want to repeat and repeat and repeat? The idea is to stop thinking, doing yes. what works, right? And then the disruption comes when someone appears on the scene, this outthinker, and they think differently. They just have a different concept, different frame. And because they think differently, things come naturally to them that to the rest of us seem unorthodox. You know, it's so interesting in the world of public television, if you are not an outthinker, you will die. Yes. yes. I mean, because someone says, oh, I'm going to do public television the way it's been done for a really long time. Right. It doesn't work. Right. Even though public television is, is a great brand, mm -hmm. if you are not constant, all of us in it. Yes. I mean, connecting to the digital world or constantly finding new ways to bring in revenue or whatever it is. Yeah. And I don't care whether it's public television or the world of sports or a techno technological field. It doesn't matter. Yes. Saying I'm going to stay the same status quo is not an option. Right, right. Well, for some people, it is an option. There's Successful six, game six, plan? Well, you, you no longer become an innovator. What I find is that innovative shows or companies or you know, any products, they stop. They, they reach this state where they just want to protect what they've built. When you've been successful, then you're less likely to want to change. You just want to lock up something. Um, but you're right. It's not an option in that there's always the risk that the outthinker is going to appear and say, hey, I can do this differently. I can do this better. You know, a lot of your work comes from this, uh, this research and experience connected to the Eastern, if you will, military yes. orientation. Yes. How does that connect to American corporate culture? Um, so... You know, I've been doing this for about 12 years, and I've got this theory that's a little bit out there, but it works. Large companies, executives. Describe it. So the idea is here that humans make decisions based on telling themselves stories, that there are certain generic narratives they tell themselves. For example, one that's well known is the Trojan horse. So you might face a problem and say, oh, the Trojan horse, how could I do that here? Now those two words, Trojan horse, they pull to, they pull up a, a very complex narrative of, I, you know, I, I put up something, they let me in, they don't know I'm there, but once I'm in the walls, then I can, you know, expand. And the Trojan horse is fake. It's fake, right? It's a front. It's a front. So it's about a front that allows people to let you in. Now I interviewed um, Alexandra Kostinuk. She's the Raymond Women World's Chess Champion, and uh, she does this thing for promotional purposes. She'll line up 15 games and 15 people will play her and she will look at the board and she'll see the winning move, the winning move, and she'll repeat and she'll win all of these games. And you could be sitting across from her for 20 minutes thinking, what's Alexandra gonna do? And she, you, you won't see it. And yet like that, she sees it. And, and the reason that she can see the winning move is simply that she tells herself more, herself more stories than you do. We can remember seven things, seven plus or minus two things. So when we're solving a problem, if it's a simple problem, we only have seven possible options, then we can think it through. But in order to see the really innovative option, it's the hundredth option. How do you see a hundred options but, by telling yourself stories? But in the consulting and the coaching that you do, and you've been doing this for a long time, yeah. you've written many uh, books before. Here's my question. Do, how do most corporate executives and leaders respond when you tell them they have to have that many options and be that creative and innovative? Yes. I was, it's gotten much easier. Seven years ago, it was a little more difficult because large companies 
were large and stable, but now you're seeing these great big companies failing, falling. Yes. You know, the most innovative companies in the world today, the most uh, admired companies in the world today are Google and Apple and Amazon. If you looked back at that list over the last 15 years, it was really quite consistent, you know, with GE and Johnson Johnson and Microsoft, there's been a transformation and these large companies are really starting to fall. So now executives are starting to worry about, hey, the obvious options maybe aren't good enough. What do you mean when you say the really great companies, quote, act like water? They have to fill yeah. every space. What does that yeah. mean? Yeah, what it means is, and bringing it back to what you're saying, is that looking for every, uh, looking for every opportunity. Um, a, f a friend of mine at uh, Burger King, he said that they calculated and they estimate that Burger King makes about 10,000 strategic decisions a day. You've got thousands of people making lots of decisions every day that is determining your strategy and how innovative you're being. It's no longer the CEO saying, we will do these three things and then everyone else goes and executes it. It's not the higher hierarchical, you know, down, yes. downward decision making. It can't be. Yes. Because because um, there are a lot of attackers coming because this, the competition 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 is accelerating. That you know used to be that you could come up with a product or you could come up with a TV show and hey there were three networks. If you got on that network, you could just you know you hold your spot for years. Now we've got hundreds. So of we need everyone on this team yeah. doing what? Out thinking. Everyone being a strategist, everyone looking for those options, trying to play like Alexandra does. Give me one more uh, habit, we're running out of time. Yeah. Um, and one thing we haven't figured out is how to create more time. Mm -hmm. Give me one more habit of these outthinkers. Well, the habit that we just talked about was um, uh, uh, frame shifting, shifting your perspective. But another one I think is really important is a disruptive mindset. You know, Steve Jobs is famous for having said, I'm as proud of what we don't do as mm -hmm. I am of what we do do. And what Steve Jobs and Apple were able to do is come up with this long list of possible things they could do. And then they could be really selective and say, hey, that's a great idea. I can see how customers would love that new device, but that's an idea that Samsung can copy next year. Because they have a longer list, they can be more selective and just choose the things that the competition will copy. Another way of looking at it is do what is truly uniquely you, that only you can do, that you'd be the best at doing, not something that another show or another company could turn on the next day. As opposed to the more we do, the more successful yes, we will do. Yes, right. Just do more. Customers will love it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And then you end up with thousands of products. Mm -hmm. Apple has... The book is called Outthink the Competition, How a New Generation of Strategists Sees Options Others Ignore. Kyan, I want to thank you for joining us and letting us see other options that we often miss. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, Sun National Bank, New Jersey Natural Gas, United Water, County College of Morris, the Merck Company Foundation, and by Fedway Associates, Inc. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.